Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Algebra 1, Chapter 8, Section 4 in this book. Now, last time I said we'll probably be talking about exponents some more. Kinda. We're talking about scientific notation that has exponents in it. Now, what is scientific notation? Well, it is a shorthand to tell your calculator numbers too big and too small for the display screen. Your calculator can do math on bigger numbers than it can display. So we've developed this sort of shorthand to communicate with our calculators to make it do bigger and smaller math. Now, there's a problem with it. When we very first started Algebra 1, I told you that for multiplication we use a dot, or we use parentheses, or we use a letter sitting next to a number. And we don't use X anymore. X is now a variable. It stands for an unknown, except in scientific notation. In scientific notation, that X is going to mean times. I know you're upset, but try to be strong. It'll be okay. All right. So the proper form for scientific notation is you have a non-zero number, a decimal, any other non-zero numbers in a row in the number, and then times 10 to an exponent. I know that sounds confusing. It's really not. Okay, I, I would prefer my green marker here because how we're going to do this is Kermit the Frog. Okay, so it's green for Kermit. And this is Kermit the Frog. And he's like the little frog prince who gets to get kissed and all that. That's one of my favorite movies, Princess and the Frog. All right, so here is the decimal point, a.k.a. Kermit the Frog. And he has to jump to his proper place, which is behind the non-zero number right there. That first non-zero number is 1. He needs to hop until he's behind the 1. And we are going to count how many times he hops. You ready? Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ribbit. He said ribbit. So now he's right there. Now we're going to write this as 1.23, our non-zero numbers here, times 10 by how many hops? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hops. Was that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, 10. I had in my head it was only 10. So that is this number written in scientific notation. See how it's smaller? So that's it, and we can tell it to our calculator, which I'm going to teach you how to do in a minute, okay? So here's a very, very small number. Kermit is right here. He needs to hop to his place behind the first non-zero number, and we need to count how many times he hops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is 1.23 times 10 to the seventh power. Here's another one. This one is in scientific notation, and they want us to take it out. Now, you will notice, oh, I forgot to tell you. I did it wrong. When numbers are very, very small, it's a negative exponent. So we would write this 10 to the negative 7th. When numbers are very, very big, the exponent there is positive. So that's 10. That tells me this is a big number. That tells me this is a very, very small number, much smaller than 1. This is positive, so this is a big number. That means my decimal place needs to go two hops that way. So my answer is 283.4. That's this number written in scientific notation. Now, I think this is stupid. There's no point in putting that in scientific notation. That can go in your calculator just fine. But this is a math book, not a science book, and they don't seem to really understand what it's for. But that I taught out of a physics book that tried to make things seem fancier than they were. You know, they were just made by the biggest math geeks. And they would do this. This would be the answer, and they'd write it like that. And I'm like, oh, really? Let's just try to confuse the kids. That makes more sense. All right. I have to get off my soapbox here. Anybody's a nerd who has that strong of opinions about math and science? Just saying. All right, so this one we're going to take out of scientific notation. It's a big number. See, it's positive, so my decimal point has to move this way five hops. 
and there are five of them. Now you would do this on a different piece of paper, but I'm a little short of space. One, two, three, four, five. Now what do I do? I need zeros there. I need to augment zeros. One, two. Put zeros in the places, and there's my number. Kermit is now right there. That's the decimal point. So it's 490,000. Those are not decimal points. Those are frog hops. Know the difference. All right, how about this one? 7.8 times 10 to the negative 1. It's negative, so I have to make it smaller by going that way. So it's going to be 0 0.78. Is it taken out of scientific notation? Once I teach you how to do this on the calculator, I think your calculators will take it out of scientific notation for you. I think you can put it in and it will tell you the answer. Okay, this one. Negative 6. So we're going 6 times this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Put zeros in the holes and we can see it's point zero 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 one two three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There, now I did it right. And you can put another zero there if you want, just to make it look nice. Okay, uh, let's put this in scientific notation. We're gonna hop to the place behind here. One, two, three, four. So this is 3.469 times 10 to the fourth power. Let's put that in scientific notation. What? It's already there. So I think, once again, this is stupid, but your book says it's 1.78 times 10 to the zero power. Because anything to the zero power is one, anything times one is itself. There's no point in that. The whole point is talking to your calculator. All right, we'll do this one one two places to its proper place so this is 3.9 times 10 to the negative two because we did two hops that way this one one two three four seven point two two times 10 to the negative fourth this one one two three four five six seven eight nine five point six times 10 to the ninth power is positive it's big now how do we put it in our calculator? If you have this problem, this would be a good science problem, um, you can put, this means times, um, we can put those parentheses or not, we can either put it in parentheses or use the time symbol. But how do you put this into your calculator? In your calculator you put 1.4, get that up there. Then you look to the second of the comma, it's right here, you do second comma, and it will display an E. That E means times 10. And then, then you say 4. And so you're saying 1.4 times 10 to the 4th power. It'll look like that with a big 4. Then say times. Type in 7.6. Then do second comma. It gets to your EE. -E. It'll put an E there. And put 3 for that. Hit enter and it will tell you 1.064 times 10 to the 8th. But it will write, it will probably write it as an E. Um, but you'll need to do it and see. See it on your calculator. So different calculators do this different. Yours is second EE. Some of them have an EE button. Some have an EXP button. Some Casios have an SCI button. Um, Use your buttons. If you're doing scientific notation, use the buttons. Do not do times 10 up arrow. It will mess you up because you will be, um, your calculator doing a division like this won't understand that this is one number and it will divide part of it and not all of it and you will get the wrong answer. Use your scientific notation buttons. Once again, it will save you a world of hurt, as my daddy used to say. Now, your book shows you how to do it without the calculator. It's, that is, goes before me learning this in the 80s. I have done this my whole life on a calculator. You will too. It's way past the 80s. It's 2020. We're doing it on the calculator if we are doing math with this. So, this one, if you put this on your calculator, you would do 1.2 second comma for the EE, -E, then negative 1, divided by 4.8, second comma for the EE, -E, negative 4, 
hit enter, it might tell you this, 2.5 times 10 to the second power, but it would probably say 250. I want you to practice these and make sure you can do it on your calculator. It's a little complicated. This one, it's, you would put this exactly on your calculator. Four, beginning parentheses, 4.0, EE negative 2, in parentheses, up arrow 3 equals, and you should get this. Practice all of those and make sure you can get the right answer on your calculator. Mess with it till you can. Math is great.